airships, particularly the smaller varieties known as blimps, have become a familiar sight in the skies over many parts of the earth. Now it can be told. During the war, they played an important role in the defense of the American continent, both north and south, performed some outstanding rescue accomplishments at sea and in the jungles, and the peacetime future anticipates their fulfilling an equally brilliant service to mankind. In the interest of mutual defense of the entire American continent and the American way of life, the United States Navy sent some of its best qualified personnel to South America with the necessary equipment to set up a blimp patrol of the coastal waters where enemy submarines and raiders were taking a heavy toll of convoy and other ships. These ships of the air did not require the building of large and elaborate landing fields just their mobile mooring masts and a few skilled mechanics to keep their engines in order. tanks are filled with helium, the only safe gas for inflating airships. Its principal source is the United States. The purpose of Flint was not one of actual combat in war. Although capable of carrying a considerable load of devastating bombs and depth charges, their value was far greater as an important unit in the threefold teamwork with combat airplanes and surface craft of various types. As a means of observation, their value is undisputed, and the part they played in suppressing the submarine menace along the entire Atlantic coast of America was of the greatest value. During most critical times, they became a familiar sight over beautiful Copacabana Beach and the nearby city of Rio de Janeiro as they made their way out to sea to ride the skies on patrol over a convoy of ships loaded with soldiers, raw products and munitions of war, and to search the seas for submarines with secret detecting equipment. of most enemy submarines was known long before they reached striking distance. But when one was sighted close to a convoy, it immediately set into motion coordinated action of blimps, ships, and combat planes. relayed to the Brazilian Air Force. The pilots assemble. They receive their instructions. And they are on their way.
pirates are not equipped to fight it out with the deck guns of an enemy submarine on the surface, but they can continue to cruise at a safe distance and provide helpful information to the convoy as it lays down a smoke screen and prepares to deal with the situation in its own way. Although American convoys suffered heavy losses from Nazi submarines, particularly during the early part of the war, these ships plied bravely on their way, even when the U-boats were known to be at hand. A submarine is dangerous when it is on the surface, but when it submerges, it becomes the fear and desperation of all surface ships. enemy submarine dives below the surface, however, the blimp can sail in for a kill. of war, surface ships are in constant danger of being torpedoed, and their only protection is depth charges of limited range. But the blimp rides safely through the sky with all the advantages in its favor. completed, the blimps can continue on convoy duty, proceed to other assignments over sea or land, or return to their own home base. accomplished with far greater grace and ease than any of our big, heavier-than-air planes. And far more limited landing field room is required. established landing fields. The blimps can be moored to these outdoors or pulled inside for more permanent parking. easily handled, either in the air or being landed, but their engines are easily accessible for such checking, cleaning or overhauling as may be required in the normal routine of service.
times of war or peace, routine patrol flights along the coast of South America sometimes take the blimps over great areas where travel by air is the only practical means. But jungles and swamps are no obstacles to these ships of the skies. Equipped with the most adequate and modern means of communication, the blimps can keep in constant touch with their home base and other distant contacts. Sometimes they receive orders which send them on search and rescue missions far beyond the frontier and deep into jungle areas where other means of rescue are exceedingly difficult or even impossible. Landings at remote small fields are often required to take on fuel and supplies or to get local information. And highly skilled field crews or elaborate facilities are not matters of necessity, which is demonstrated by this landing, entirely with the assistance of these Brazilian village folk and a rather crude mooring mass. supplies and information procured, the blimp quickly takes off to continue on its mission of search and rescue. jungle areas cover large sections of many districts in South America. Air transportation has tremendously aided development of these regions, and many planes fly over them with equipment and supplies for remote mines and other developments. Occasionally, these planes are, for various reasons, forced down in these vast and impenetrable jungle areas. The pilots and passengers are almost certain to perish, unless rescued by outside assistance. And the blimp has already proven itself by far the most practicable and efficient means of search and rescue of these unfortunate victims. Three different groups of airplane pilots and passengers who had been forced down in vast jungle areas of Brazil were found and rescued within one month during 1944 by a single United States Navy blimp. Every one of these men might have perished if it had not been for the blimp. The blimp is so easily maneuvered that in many instances it can be put right down on the ground for the survivors to climb aboard. are not always accomplished with such ease. The character of the country in which airplanes are forced down generally does not permit bringing the blimp down to the ground. But such difficulties have been overcome by special rescue equipment, 
designed for the purpose by the United States Naval Airship Training Experimental Command, with headquarters at Lakehurst, New Jersey, USA. slowly over the spot. The ring can be dropped literally into the survivor's hands for him to climb aboard and be hoisted up to the blimp with the assistance of a counterweight at the other end of the rope. If, however, the survivors are badly injured or otherwise not in condition to get into the ring without aid, a medical officer is let down to the ground to help them. As the survivor comes up, the counterweight goes down. reaches the open doorway of the blimp, he is pulled inside, where any medical treatment required is immediately administered. into position for another rescue. Less than 15 minutes are required for the average rescue, from the time the blimp arrives over the scene to the time when the survivor is safely inside the airship. As many as three men have been rescued from death in the jungle within the brief time of 17 minutes. This same equipment is equally as efficient in rescuing men from the sea who have had to abandon their ships and float on the ocean surface in rubber rafts or merely with the aid of life preservers. survivors are aboard the blimp, a special device releases the counterweight and the airship proceeds back to civilization. Once more the jungle has been cheated of victims. Man's successful conquest of the air has served mankind and the blimp, like many other of man's marvelous inventions, has earned its place in history's hall of fame and renown.